in life we come to are we experience monumental moments that define or change our lives. Hello, Mr. Riviera? And as exciting or as challenging as they may be, those moments always come with choices at about the same magnitude. There were some struggles of losing everything and losing the life. Choices for the brave of heart who are willing to go against the common grain. The love I felt from Jesus just consumed me. And push into the height of the uncharted or those rarely charted places. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> uh, I'm doing a two-part uh, little series, so to speak, on the sons of God. And last week, um, or you can look for it somewhere, but last week um, I kind of went over Genesis 1, 6 through 4, uh, describing uh, how God and how Eve spoke about these sons of God. And I just want to recap that real quick. So in Genesis 6, 1 through 4, uh, it came to pass when men, those are men, the man, uh, um, Adam, ha Adam, uh, began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them. That's men and women. And that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, all of which they chose. The sons of God were here in this passage is Hebrew, meaning uh, benin, means sons, child, children, grandchildren, uh, Israelites, Levites, uh, Never once does it say angel. Uh, Of God is Elohim. And that means that they are powerful people. They are anointed. They are appointed. They're separated. They're judges, rulers. These are, those were the sons of God. Uh, The sons of God saw the daughters of men. These men here uh, are the same Ha Adam. And uh, these are the sons of Adam, but of the seed of Cain. We know that because of Eve herself. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. She's going to tell us the truth. She says in Genesis 4, 1, she says that um, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And then again, she says of Abel and Seth, for God has appointed me. For God has appointed me another seed instead of Abel. So there were two seeds. Then God went on to say to the serpent, I will put enmity between your seed and my seed. And, or her seed, just his seed. And that's the biblical foundation between what is flesh and what is spirit. This is the beginning of the foundation of the through line through Christ bringing us into the spirit and away from the works of the flesh. Okay? So after the sons of God had taken themselves, uh, those daughters of men, um, then uh, they, hold on, they produced mighty men of old, men of renown. So many people say if these were not fallen angels, then how did they make these angels? Well, it says first that there are Nephilim. Those are giants, but those giants mean peoples, a kinds of peoples before the flood and after the flood, okay? So God didn't destroy the earth because of just of these um, Nephilim, these giants. And uh, anyway, so then it says that they, they, the sons of God had relations with the daughters of men. These are mighty men of old, men of renown. And we know that these are, uh, how do you say it, Hagiburims. Hagiburims. <laughs> these are not giants. These are mighty men. These are warriors. David had a list of them. He had So many of them, and it lists them all. And men of renown are men that make a name for themselves. And it's kind of like being famous or being infamous. Um, So we know that those sons of God that were on the mountain were actually sons of Adam, 
the Bible says that the son of Enos, the son of uh, Adam, the son of God, okay? And that they lived on a high mountain, which is Mount Hermon in Israel, a fathering mountain, a sacred mountain, a snow mountain, the mountain that Jesus took the disciples, three of his disciples, up. And when they climbed to the top and they were weary, then that is when he transfigured before them. And they saw Moses and Elijah for a reason, but I can't get into that now. And it also is the, the mountain that feeds into the River Jordan. It also is the mountain that the, it's dew is the dew that falls on Mount Zion, the sun. So here we have in Israel, in the Golan Heights, this fathering mountain feeds into the Jordan River and is the dew upon the sun, the Mount Zion. Okay, all of these uh, are misconceived, misinterpreted, and misunderstood. And um, I'm telling you the truth because I'm just reading what the Word says and what Eve says and what God said. And God said that he destroyed the earth because men were also flesh and that every imagination of their heart was for evil and perversion. And unfortunately, it's still the same today. Okay? So now, now I want to go forward and I want to say where else do we find these sons of God? We find them again in Job 1 through 6. And Job was a patriarch, we know that. And he was known for being hated, and um, yet he was greatly loved and persecuted. And he was also known for his patience. In Job 1, 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, hmm, um, excuse me, where, uh, uh, where comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro and uh, from the earth and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, that he is perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, that's a big thing, and eschew evil. Okay, so here we find the sons of God again in Job. Many believe that uh, these, even if they believe that the fallen angels in Genesis 1 through 4, if they believe that those are the sons of Seth, uh, and that there's a difference between the sons of Cain that were not on the mountaintop, that were basically unbelievers, so to speak, as a through line, um, that they believe, a lot of scholars believe that these sons of God, yes, are fallen angels. But I want to ask you, I want to ask you uh, what happened here. Because we know that these are the same sons of God because these are, these are Benin Ha Elohim. It's the same sons that are on the mountain, okay? The same ones that uh, are the sons of God on the mountain that fell. Okay, so they come to present themselves to the Father. And to present yourself is to make a stand, you want something. You're making a stand. So the God, sons of God come in before the throne of the Father to make a stand. Why? What did they want? Okay? Whatever they wanted, Satan comes in behind as the accuser of the brother. He comes in behind in the midst of them. And we know uh, that the midst means the heart. So he comes in to the heart of them, into the heart of the matter. And I highly doubt that fallen angels are going to come and make a stand before God. Okay? But, okay, let, let's just say, let's just say they did. Let's just say that they did, that these are fallen angels. So what did they do? Did they come to make a stand before God? Did they come to tout him, to say, hey, you know, we made your people fall. We perverted your, uh, your creation. Um, and then in, with that point of view, uh, did this diminished uh, point of view, this diminished God <laughs> that this theory gives us, did he bow to this weakness 
uh, into weakness and, and bow to their taunting and then say, oh, well, I have somebody. There's, there's somebody there. Have you considered my son Job, who's righteous in all his ways? I mean, as if God in this moment is going to try to prove himself to Satan and his minions? Is that what we believe? Um, and as if, as if God is going to toy with his righteous sons, as if it means nothing to him? Whenever did God ever bow to Satan? Or whenever will he ever bow to Satan? Never. Not then, not now, not in the forevermore. Never. Never. So, is it really what we believe happened? I want to propose to you a different story, a different scenario. Okay? Bear with me. I want to propose that the sons of God, those same sons that lived on Mount Hermon, the beautiful sacred mountain, uh, where Jesus brought the transfiguration, are now in heaven. And they've come to make a stand before God. And they're saying, and, 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 and they're saying, remember us. Remember us, God. Remember the sons of God, the, your sanctified ones. The ones that were, the ones that are on the earth, and those that are to come. Remember us. Much like the martyrs are underneath the altar, and they're crying out in heaven, how long, O oh God, how long until you vindicate us? We still care in heaven. We still care. Do you think that we're going to go to heaven and not care about what's happening on earth? If that were, not, if that were so, there would not be a cloud of witnesses. There would, not be, there would not be prayers coming up for the saints. These sons of God made a stand saying, remember us. Remember those that are to come. Remember your heart, Father. Remember your creation, Father. That's what they were saying. That's what they were doing. And Satan comes in, into the heart of them, into the heart of God. And he says, excuse me, God, but I have authority here. I have legal right on the earth, and nothing has changed. And it is at this point, it is at this point when God looks at Job and he says, have you considered, sons of God, have you considered Satan, my son Job, my son Job who is righteous and who is perfect before me, He's a good man. What he was saying in that moment was that there will come a time when one will come, a righteous son of God, and his name is Jesus Christ, that he would come onto the earth and he would be tempted by Satan in every way, and yet he will not sin. And Satan will try to destroy him, yet he will not forsake God. But what he will do is he will stand as the Lamb of God and he will willingly lay down his life as a sacrificial living sacrifice, as the second Adam, as the Son of Man, as the Son of God. Sheila. And through him, he will take many sons up to that mountain, that high mountain, to that mountain of transfiguration. And he will transform them, and he will give them the power to become sons of God again. Where they will walk 
in the spirit and be reconciled and become spiritual giants as Satan tried to pervert. He made the giants because he wanted to pervert who we are. Don't you know we're spiritual giants? So he brings these giants in the natural. And, and, and he didn't do it through, through uh, having relations with men. Because those are not giants. Those are mighty men. But it's these sons of God that Jesus will raise up. It's the sons of God that will go into the millennium. A lot of them will be martyred. But martyrdom is laying your life down as a living sacrifice. And these sons of God are the ones that will go into the millennium and they will rule and they will reign as sons of God, as judges on this earth, restored back to that mountaintop. And guess what they're going to do? They are the ones that are going to put Satan to, to, to end. They are going to destroy Satan and get back legal right. Jesus got back the legal right on earth. But these sons of God are going to take and strip Satan of everything, of everything, defeat him. Then God's going to make a new earth and a new heaven, and we're going to live as we were originally intended to live, as sons of God, communing with God day to day, face to face. Okay, so I just want to quickly go through this. Um, it, uh, the doctrine that, uh, the false doctrine, I want to call it, um, of that they're fallen angels, sons of God are fallen angels, they get it from the book of Job. Uh, Job, um, Jude, I'm sorry, Jude. And it actually is quite funny because that is the book telling you and warning you about false teachers and the judgment that will come on them. And Jod uses the scenarios as examples, and he says, the angels which kept not their first estate, but, he, but they left their own habitation. Um, these are the ones, the angels that fell with Satan in the rebellion, and they left heaven, which was their first habitation. We don't have to twist it into something it's not. And it, that just means their origin, their heavenly place with God, Okay. Um, has, he has reserved for darkness until the day of judgment. He has reserved means that he has set them apart until darkness. And, you know, there's more there. I'm going to speak on that at another time because there's a whole understanding to that that, that it's, it just, it's, not just what, it's not what they're saying. Sodom and Gomorrah giving themselves over to fornication and to strange flesh. In Genesis 19... There were two beautiful godly angels that came to rescue Lot and his family. And all the city came to Lot and wanted to rape those two beautiful men. Lot offers his two daughters in place, but they didn't want those two uh, daughters. They wanted men. Well, it's going to be just like in the days of Noah. There's going to be gross perversion. And I'm not just talking about same sex because it's worse than that. Do you know right now in... In England, they're trying to pass a law that adults can legally have relations with 10-year-old children. They want to make that legal. Do you know right now the pedophilia that's going on in the earth right now? It's going on all over. And we're not doing anything about it. We just go on about our lives because we're afraid. That's gross. That's gross perversion if you have any idea what they do to those children you would not be sitting here right now you would not be sitting there complacent you wouldn't be in the last days it's going to be worse and Jude says right there woe to them for they have gone the way of Cain Sheila, it's spelt out. It's spelt out. And there's a through line. God is a good writer. Now listen, you can believe anything you want. You can, you have the right to. 
But in believing that the sons of God are fallen angels who married children, uh, married and had children, you diminish what Jesus came to do. You diminish who you are. You diminish everything of what God created. And you empower Satan. And Satan would love for you to do that. I'm asking you that you not do that. I'm asking you to just believe the word. We don't need all this extra biblical Jewish mysticism. You know, that's where Kabbalah came from. There were all kind of writers back in those days. And they're not even sure if the book of Enoch is from which Enoch? Cain's Enoch or God's Enoch? In John 1, 12, John said of Jesus, but as many as receive him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but the will of God. We are meant to be sons of God. And we are meant to live on a mountaintop in purity, in innocence, in holiness. I know that's hard because we're, we are complacent, complacent, compromised, conditioned people. We've come a long way. And it's getting worse. It's getting a lot worse. And I'm telling you, a lot of you right now, that don't even, may not even believe what I'm saying, there'll come a time, I promise you, where you're going to see such gross evil that you're going to shiver. You're going to be running for that mountaintop, running, begging to get up that mountaintop and to become purified and be forgiven because of the sin, the grossness of what's coming on this earth, and it's already happening. It's just hidden, just hidden. They kidnap those children. And they, they, they do the most horrific things to them. And those children are crying out for somebody, some adult, to come and save them. And there's no answer. There's no answer for those children. But we're fallen angels, right? So what power do we have? I think not. I think we're sons of God. I think we have divineness in us. We have the power. We have the power to overcome. And we have the power to be powerful. And God's going to pour forth his power. He's going to raise the dead. I watched in my own living room a little baby girl that has never, ever walked in her entire life. I prayed for her. And her mother took her from my arms. And, and not my arms, but on the floor put her in her arms, and took her away. And I begged her, I was sorry, but I believe God does miracles, and I believe God is a powerful God. That mother came back a couple weeks later with that little girl walking and said, we came back to show you something, Terry. And that little girl, she said, Leela, walk. Walk to Terry, and that little girl came walking like this. It's a sign. It's a wonder of what is to come. So I'm asking you today, believe God for his word. Believe that you're a spiritual giant, and believe that God is going to pour out his power on his sons of God. Father, I, I, I just thank you for your word. Thank you for your heart. I thank you, Father God, that you share your heart with man. That you are a living God that loves us that makes himself known to us, that makes his heart known to us. And Father, I just thank you, Father, that you would share your heart. You would share your heart with those that have a heart to hear you. I have to go, but um, I'm coming back. <laughs> thank you for watching, and um, God bless you. Sons of God.